Well, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you except to say that I'm delighted here and to have a report that I know you're going to present and I think we're all agreed on the improvement that has been made but the things that really remain to be done in our relationship with Japan. I think that's one of the most important partnerships we have. So, Well, I, I want to thank you very much, Mr. President, for taking time from your busy schedule to be with us and I want to present this report uh, to you from the Commission. Now, I would like to um, quickly point out that this is a, is a joint effort. Uh, the Japanese and American uh, continues work very closely together. And the report is, is really a, an agreement uh, between both members. As you can expect, there might have been some things that would have been said if we would had complete freedom to say them. But I was very encouraged by the fact that the Japanese have been very forthcoming and very much interested. Um, I think we all came out of this uh, study with a conclusion that this is an extremely important relationship, not only in the short term, but in the long term. Uh, in addition to the work that we did in discussing these issues among the Commission members, we had a number of studies done on, on various uh, aspects of this relationship, a very good study on agricultural policy, a good study on industrial policy, and uh, we also had a study made uh, to try and get some idea about what uh, the options would be in the long term, what would happen if we continued a close partnership with the Japanese over the next 10 or 15 or even in the next century, and if we didn't. And I think uh, the conclusion we've come to is that uh, this relationship is so important that we have no option but to, for both of our countries to work very hard to maintain the, the close cooperation. And uh, I think that uh, out of that, uh, and really uh, in part out of some of the things that, uh, that you and your associates have done here, uh, our recommendation is that, uh, that this uh, relationship uh, will benefit from better management. And I think the exercise that we went through when you presented the yen dollar issue to the Prime Minister this last fall, the fact that Secretary Reagan followed up on that and George Bush went over it was a, an example, I think, of, of the way some of these issues can be managed in a more effective way than simply reactionary process that has, uh, has come about. Now, the uh, Japanese are presenting their report to the Prime Minister at about this time, and I've had a, a wire here from Japanese co-chairman, I thought I might just read an excerpt from this because he especially wanted to, uh, to have you uh, uh, realize that, uh, that the Japanese uh, uh, have concurred in the program. And uh, he's going to approach the meeting with the Prime Minister, and our plan is to strongly underscore a major point in the report. That is, the importance of the U.S.-Japan relationship and the fact that the two leaders should pay priority attention to this relationship. We will obviously stress the growing importance and opportunities for cooperation of our two nations in global affairs. We will certainly point out some of the problems, particularly in the management of the relationships, but we will discuss them in the context of the need for greater bilateral cooperation. Some of the problems, if left unresolved, will undermine our capabilities to make joint contributions to the global, global economic and political health and advancement. We hope to encourage our Prime Minister to instruct the government officials, as well as the leaders in the private sector, to study the report carefully and implement some of the re recommendations. And it is our belief that a deep mutual confidence and a strong commitment to the shared goals between your President and our Prime Minister are providing us with a golden opportunity to maximize our cooperative relationship. Public officials, as well as the private sector in both countries, should seek to find ways to further promote such cooperative relationships and also improve the management of some of the frictions ine inevitable in the inter interdependent and close bilateral relationship. We are very pleased that the President, Secretary Schultz, and other members of the Cabinet 
That in itself demonstrates the importance your government leaders are attaching to our bilateral relationship. We hope that you will convey to your president a deep respect from the members of the Japanese Commission. It was our privilege to serve your president as well as our prime minister in this meaningful joint project. And oh, that's fine. So we, and we hope that, uh, that this will provide uh, some guidance to uh, move ahead with what you already started here. And we think you've made a very good progress so far, but we also think there's a lot of opportunity to continue the work that's being done. And uh, it's been a great pleasure for us to participate in this program. But let me just uh, conclude by saying that uh, unless you feel otherwise, we consider the work of this commission to be finished. But if any of us uh, individually uh, can be helpful in implementing some of the recommendations that you, that you may wish to adopt, we stand ready to do so. Well, Dave, I just, and all of you, I just want to give you a heartfelt thanks. I think it's magnificent what you have done. And uh, I'm glad to hear the last few words that you said because it's very possible <laughs> that I might uh, follow my thank you with uh, occasionally saying, by the way, would you? Uh <laughs> well, we're, we're ready to help because we, we well, think it's an important issue and, and we're just uh, delighted with the progress you've already started in this area. Well, God bless you all. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. It's a, it's a good report. Well, now I look for my chance to read it. <laughs> All right. I think it's now also true that the, the process. Souvenirs here. Maybe in your long years this has already happened to you, but. No, so. this is not, and I'm just delighted. Oh, thank you very much. This is just a pin. I feel very sweet. Isn't this lovely? It's the one you're wearing. It's very sweet. It's very exciting. Thank you. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, another little okay. souvenir. Thank you. Thank you. Put it right on. Thank you very much. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, now I hope you'll give Nancy a laugh. I will. Say. She's, well, she should be uh, out in, the, in Michigan by now. She's Don't three she states of the drug Yes. Sometimes I think our schedule's bad, and I think yours, because <laughs> I can't understand it. Yes, I, I think about that old cliche about politics make strange bedfellows. They're, they're kind of messing up a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> you're a lot too. <laughs> All right, well, that is. I always remember when, I, when you first came here and Bill came up and said, Thank God I knew you were a Republican again. <laughs> yes, because so traditionally, you know, the Secretary of the Smithsonian is a, you know, absolutely nonpartisan. You've got all that Congress to deal with. You can't take sides. Why well, you're a Secretary. You can't let it show yeah. anyway. Unlike the, the cabinet. <laughs> well, some of them can't. We, you know, we don't yes. have the defense or state or the attorney general out there. We have two great supporters for this new center we're building in Smithsonian from Asia and Middle East and Africa, and that is Kat Weinberger and George Schultz.
Schultz. And I said in my speech today, I don't know that that meant a tremendous amount to us to have two people who know and appreciate what the Smithsonian is hoping to do for the third world oh, countries and our understanding of their cultures and their development of self-respect and our development of understanding and respect for our theory. I think it's part of the future of the Smithsonian to play a part in the efforts towards peace through cultural understanding. I think it can be done. I think that's been one what? of Dylan's mottos. It can be done. Yeah. The O, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, so thank, thank you. Thank you, sir, that I think we thank used you to very much for this. Thank, thank you very much. And you'll be elected. to a group.
Thank you, sir. Well, this is very kind of you to come in. Mm -hmm. I guess you were probably all there with everyone uh, when we were downstairs at the hotel. It was quite a quite a group picture. I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> My biggest surprise was when the little what's her name? Uh, Mary Lou. Mary Lou. Jack. Stepped over <laughs> and all of a sudden <laughs> she was way down there. Sorry, last week she said, hadn't grown much at all. <laughs> <laughs> from the same state. Well, well, this is great. So I talked with, with Michael and Parker. I live in Arizona, and he was out in Parker dove hunting over the first weekend of September. And we had Cameron and called him. As a matter of fact, we thought that he was going to be with me and his family were going to be on the platform in Orange County when we uh, opened the campaign there. Then found out we lost it to a dog. To a <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Or he was in Phoenix that same weekend. Yeah. Yeah. You tell me what's so going to be my first shotgun. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, excuse me, could we have another photograph of Mr. Connor? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Could we Thank have you. one with Ms. the President and Mr. Carter alone, too? This is a privilege. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, good to see you. I, I couldn't imagine you doing what you did. Mary, this is Mary Malloy, Mr. President, who handles the uh, gun for well, the Office of the Public Liaison. Thank you. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I was just going to tell you, I know I couldn't match yours, but I have been a gun lover all my life. And uh, if they say there's a mystique about it, there is. I've got some very fine pieces. And uh, Nancy once did me a great favor. I found that I shoot left handed. And uh, just anything, I guess I was intended to be left handed, although I'm not. <laughs> raised the other way, but anything that I just do naturally, I do it that way. And so for years, I've shot with bold action. That's a nice motion. Bought me a Weatherby. And she had it made for a left handed shooter. <laughs> it was the slowest shooting gun I've ever had <laughs> Because every time I shoot it, I go over here reaching and it isn't here, then I have to go over. And that's completely backward to <laughs> put the way I should do it. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank we are obliged by statute to present to you a copy of my, our annual report. I do so now. I urge you to get a good feel of it because it contains a budget which is balanced, and we haven't seen that in Washington. <laughs> 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 Maybe I can learn how to do it. <laughs> well, I'm my second presentation <laughs> is on behalf of all of the boys and girls of who are members of Boys Clubs of America. This is a piece of feathered art done by one of our youngsters in our Omaha chapter. And it gives me great pleasure to give that to you, sir. Well, I can see, yes, that's beautiful. And thank you for all you're doing for us. Now we're going to uh, you. let these boys introduce themselves to you. Mr. President, my name is David Taylor from Jackson. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you, sir. Tony Eckert from Edmonds, Washington. Good to see you. My name is Al Dennis Acosta. Thank you for sitting here. Nice to have you here. I'm Jim Brock, Martin, and Jim Lee Good to see you. Thank you, Brock, sir. From the New York City Council. Nice to have you. We have I have more members of that for an election. Mr. President, Carl Andrews, Executive Director of the Office. Nice to see you. Mr. President, Joel Mabry from Mount Canada, Louisiana. Mr. President, Dave Messier from Jersey City, New Jersey. Nice to see you. Mr. President, Jim Wellington, North Rock, Arkansas. Good to have you. Mr. President, Nanya Boom, Everett Washington. Nice to see you. Mr. Park, Greenwich, Connecticut, sir. Nice to see you. Mr. President, 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 M
understand there's a decision to be made, or is it? John, we need a decision to be made. Yeah, this is nice to have you been working on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, uh, as chairman of the Boys Club in America, we'd like to have you induct the, uh, the Boy of the Year, and uh, he's going to hear this for the first time. So, would you mind reading the information on the plaque of the Boys Clubs of America, 1984-1985, National Youth of the Year, presented to Anthony Agnes. <laughs> and let me finish here. Chosen from more than one million members of Boys Clubs of America in recognition of outstanding achievements in citizenship and leadership as illustrated in a commitment of voluntary service to family, friends, and community. On behalf of uh, us five and all the um, all the kids across the nation, this was made um, by a boys club in Delaware. It was made to present to you here for all you've done for us in the boys club throughout America, and we want you to know. Yeah, you're welcome in the boys club anytime you want. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it's the key to the boys club. <laughs> Before doing that, I wanted the president to meet Mr. Al Davis, who was the runner up. ago, they were on a rescue exhibition from England, sailing ships in that time, 1855. Well, no, it was found in 1855, but sometime prior to that, up in the Arctic. And in 1855, an American whaling captain found this ship with all sails set, as if uh, it had just been abandoned. And he brought it out, and we then refurbished it and dread yeah, take turns. <laughs> Dressed it all up and presented it to Queen Victoria. Uh, and, or not Queen Victoria, to England. Some years later, it was Queen Victoria who, when it came time to decommission the ship, as some of the planks carved and this way made into a desk, and it was uh, shipped over here when Hayes was president of uh, this country. And uh, it's been used by presidents. Uh, Ever since. That's beautiful. Okay. Turn it there. The chair is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Brought my own. Today, we had to add this rim around the bottom. Mm -hmm. People did that because every time I tried to get my knees under the desk, I kept breaking, bend, breaking my knees on the desk. So we raised the. I want to say that I worked for the campaign back home. I was trying to get the person in the back of the business. I've seen, I understand what you've done. Oh, yes, I've been in Arkansas, but not as president. Not as president. No. 
been there, as a matter of fact, it was the governor's conference when I was governor of California. Oh, I see. Well, I hope that I can. I'd like that. very much to come back. Thank you. Well, y'all can leave now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is me. This part is not part of the history. Of the this is uh, family and a few souvenirs of my own. Uh, Senator Howard Baker, the majority leader of the Senate, his hobby is you rarely see him without a camera. He's a great photographer. He took this picture up at our ranch. Where is that located in California? It's up north of Santa Barbara, up in the hills. Uh, when we ride, there are some hills there from which we can look inland to the Santa Inez Valley and look out the other way and see the Channel Islands in the, is, in the is ocean. Is that a family ranch? Was, did your father own it? Or? No, no. This, uh, you just bought it? We, we found it. It goes all the way back to Spanish land grants and the house, which isn't visible there, but which is over this way from where we're standing. The house was built in 1872. Uh, it's adobe, and the adobe bricks were made there of the soil right on the ranch. And uh, it's still standing, and we're still using it. It's a small house, but the only heat is, uh, is a fireplace, isn't that? That's yeah, why uh, a lot of wood. Yeah, we cut a lot of wood. This is uh, that's in the yard of the ranch, and it's my daughter. Nancy and this is my son Michael and his wife. These are our grandchildren. Uh, Mike is the father. That's my daughter Maureen and her husband. That's my son uh, Ron. What's he accepting there? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, what's he accepting there? Where's it in? Uh, Sorry. No, I think uh, we were just looking at a piece of paper. He, uh, he writes now and, uh, for magazines. You're looking forward to the debates coming up. You're looking forward to the debates coming up. Well, yes, in a way. Maybe it'll give me a chance to uh, reply to some rather inaccurate statements that have been made. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Well, we're all ready. Uh, well, thanks a lot. Thank you. That picture of George Washington up there is one of the only paintings I understand where he didn't have his wig on. <laughs> and that was found by an American some years ago in Ireland. And he managed to buy it to bring it back. He felt that it should be back in this country. Mm -hmm. That's old George. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Thanks a lot. It was not good. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. This is Eileen Peters. There is no one that faith works in staff. She's a liaison with all the youth groups.